joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to be in the feature matchup of the prelims of the UFC's debut on ESPN. It'll be a part of the ESPN card, not the ESPN Plus. Alex Hernandez. Alex, man, I appreciate time. And obviously, uh, you get to kick off the new year uh, on ESPN. I mean, growing up, did you ever like think like, man, I will fight on ESPN one day? Man, growing up, I thought I'd play basketball, and then I realized I was too short and I sucked. So, no, I never, didn't have too many aspirations of being an athlete at an early age. But this is definitely badass and definitely everything I could have dreamed about as a young adult and, and uh, coming into the sport. So, I mean, I, I couldn't be more excited to start the year off like that and, and be on that inaugural card with the ESPN. I was on your Instagram uh, feed, which anybody wants to follow you at, at the Great One Fifty Five. Uh, I was watching your your video blog you put up that really chronicles how long of a day you have from the first training session all the way to to the end. So, what is that motivation to every morning to to get up out of bed and, and to do all the the training regimens that you're doing? Yeah, you know, I'm fortunate to be uh, to be a single guy without kids or you know family really any obligation at all. And so all I have to worry about is myself and my career. And I definitely use youth and vitality to my advantage because I feel like it would just be utter complacency not to. So uh, I, I get up and I go to work. And it's kind of been like that. Having a real job also, you know, kind of the office and juggling my training. I'm used to these, you know, 15-hour days, 12-hour days. So people talk about working for a few hours or training for a couple. I just don't understand what the hell you do rest of your day and so I'm, I'm just an eager student of the game i'm excited to come in i might not always be the first one there but i'm always the last when i stay late and um i'm just always always staying busy learning and, and engaged in the game the whole day it's just it's all i have to do and it's all i care to do yeah, as a small business owner, I know exactly how you feel i mean you know people who don't work 12 50 hour days like man what, what are you doing i mean i, I totally yeah, get yeah. It's where you're coming from. One of the things that, that stuck out to me about uh, the beginning of that, that, that video blog you had was you working in, in the gi. And some fighters say, like working in the gi. Some say, no, nah, I don't like working in the gi. Uh, is, are you kind of, is it, hey, I want to work in the gi, or is it just kind of based on how you're feeling? Uh, no, I think the gi, the gi is true jiu-jitsu, you know. Uh, that, that, that's the true art of Brazilian jiu-jitsu is in the gi. And so I think that you're neglecting a lot of the uh, – the, the techniques and, and the true discipline of the of the art if you're not utilizing the key. And I think everything essentially translates over. Obviously, the grips aren't the same, but I've never rolled with a black belt in a gi that's not a killer without one. Inversely, there's plenty of people I've seen no gi who can't handle themselves in a gi. So I think, um, I think it definitely transcends into MMA however it needs to, and, and everybody's kind of different how they like to incorporate their game, but I think uh, I think the gi is paramount. I think it's crucial, and certainly when I'm leading up to the fight, like you know, now we're only a few weeks out. Now I don't worry about the gi at this point. Now, uh, if I attend a gi session, I'm I'm the only guy. I, I, I show up at no gi, and then I have a few guys just take off their gi tops, and they roll with me specifically. Um, but I, I think the gi is definitely a, a crucial piece of the game. Of course, initially when we heard about your fight in January, it was Francisco Trinaldo, supposed to be uh, on January 26th. Of course, we all know that event's no longer taking place. And, and now you're taking on Don Cerrone. Uh, how did kind of all this unfold in your world where uh, you find out that you, you've got a, a new opponent in Don Cerrone? Man, I, I was so excited, dude. I got that. I got an update from my manager, Jason House. Um, one evening, I was finishing up practice at the gym, and uh, – you know, I had a couple of text messages, call me ASAP, call me ASAP, and I had a, a FaceTime uh, missed call, which made me a little bit more optimistic that it was FaceTime versus, you know, just a, a general missed call. And uh, it's either, you know, really good news or bad news when you get that ASAP. And so uh, I called him, and he, he said that uh, Sean Shelby approached him with this option for us to fight Cerrone instead, and immediately I was just like, fuck yes. You know, of course, if you get opportunities like that, you got to seize them. And so without, without second thought, I – accepted that offer and uh and we moved forward and you know i was thrilled there's always that those uh couple of days of limbo in between when you're waiting for the deal to close where you're a little on edge and the thought of going back to the original fight no offense to Trinaldo or anything uh would have definitely been much more underwhelming after having that kind of thing in your face you know do you see a difference between donald Stroni fighting at 155 as opposed to 170 
Yeah, I, you know, not that I bank on it at all, but I can't imagine that not hurting him or, or being um, an adverse effect and getting down to 155 again. He's been comfortable at 170 for so long. And um, he seemed to be pretty confident there. But, you know, I, I think he just kind of uh, flippantly flows of the wind, you know, kind of switching divisions, trains like trains. I think he's just a little negligent. And, um, the drop to 55 I don't know, may or may not be in his best interest health-wise. I'm not sure, but uh, I don't think it's going to play into his favor. And I know for a fact I'm, I'm going to be the stronger, faster, more technical fighter at 55. I'm, I'm built for 55. I manage my weight well there. I'm extremely strong at 55. Uh, and so if you have to go out of your way, whether it be an oversized 55 or not, it just won't. It just won't behoove him. I think matching up with me at 55. I, it, it probably would probably have been a better fight for him if we just both fought at 170. I, I think the term legend would be thrown around with Donald Cerrone just because of how long he's been in the UFC. That the records that he has. Do you remember the first time you saw a Donald Cerrone fight? Man, I can't remember the first one, but yeah, obviously he's been on the scene for like a fucking decade or so. You know, I feel like I was just riding a bicycle and this dude was already inside the octagon. So. Uh, yeah, he's been he's been in the ring for a while, but that's a lot of wear and tear. And and if you haven't done it already, you're not going to do it. This is this is my time. I, I'm I'm happy to be eliminating a legend, and with all due respect, completely eliminating a legend. I'm I'm on the rise. I've got every attribute at my advantage and, and every every desire for advancement. Where I feel like Cerrone's just kind of time and killing it. So, you know, it's a pleasure and honor to stand across and hit him in the face, uh, stand across from the cage, but I'm not, I'm certainly not worried about that at all. Uh, you know, I think when, uh, when, you, when you think about the difference between Trinaldo and and Cerrone, where Cerrone, you know, he could do multiple things, where Toronto, Toronto, you always kind of feel like he's a grinder. You know, he's going to grind on you. Uh, do you prefer yeah. this type of matchup where, you, I mean, you know, you just know that there's just many, multiple aspects you got to be ready for? Yeah, you know, honestly, if you put Ronaldo and Cerrone in a cage, it just depends who showed up. I don't know who would win that fight, to be honest. Like you said, one one might show up. Like Cerrone may or may not show up, and when he does, he seems to be a bit dangerous. And when he doesn't, he's not. Ronaldo's a grimy, grinding motherfucker that's going to be a little bulldog no matter what. And so even though he might be elementary in his approach and he's kind of one-dimensional, but he's tough as hell. And um, he's, got, he's got real power. And so, you know, there, there's certain there's certain uh, attributes that Trinaldo has that you'd want to prepare for versus Cerrone. Um, I, I think Trinaldo's a tougher human being. Uh, but Cerrone's a bit more dynamic. I still think he's flat. He's extremely flat in respect to me. And he's not nearly as versatile. So really... Neither one, neither one are overly threatening to me, and I certainly don't think Cerrone is any more of a threat than Ronaldo is. I just think Cerrone is a far better and uh, more respectable name, just because he's been around for so long and accomplished so much. Uh, in our previous conversation, you talked about the goal is always go out there and get the stoppage victory. You don't want to go the distance. Uh, so I'm guessing that's kind of the, the main goal in here is is make sure this fight doesn't go 15 minutes. Yeah, no, I, I, want to, I want I want three checks. I, want, I didn't leave with that third check last time. And it hurt. You know, I, want, I want three checks. I want to go out there. I want to put them away in the first or second round. Uh, and I want to do it in exemplary fashion. And any goals you've set for yourself for 2019? Just devastating W's. You know, I want to be, um, I want to be lined up for a title for 2020 as my, uh, that, that 2020 debut fight. So, whatever I need to accomplish, three wins, four wins, whatever it is this year, or just just stack those W's and do it, do so emphatically. And, of course, everyone's going to be able to see this fight on the UFC debut on ESPN coming up on January 19th. Of course, main card on ESPN+. Plus. Alex, as always, I appreciate time. Uh, let all my listeners know where they can follow you at on social media and those sponsors that help support you. Yeah, at the great 155 across all platforms. So, on Academy Northeast. Try to strength and conditioning, Gaines Bakery, Cedrix, Farmer Juice, and Strat Sports Fine. All people that take care of you. I appreciate you 